So tonight we're talking about renewing your mind. And you know, what exactly does that mean and what does that involve? And I got to thinking when we were when I was looking at the scripture and reading some of um, Pete Cabrera's notes, it reminds me, there, it seems like we're a country that's obsessed with renovation and makeovers. I mean, there's makeover houses, there's makeover people, you know. And one of my favorite things to watch with JR is HGTV. And there's a new one of these, you know, home renovation couples, and they're they're Ben and Aaron Napier. And they live in Laurel, Mississippi. And their big thing is they are renovating these old, these beautiful old homes in this small town. And as they put, as they put it, they're just giving them a little love. So what the what the thing is is that you know they've got a buyer that comes into town and they want to buy a house. You know, they want to move back to their hometown and they, you know, they help them select. They're not realtors or anything. They're renovation experts. But the, so the person buys the house and, um, and then they pretty much turn it over to Ben and Aaron to just renovate it back to where it's livable and in good condition and all of that. And, you know, Ben and Aaron spend a lot of time getting to know the new owners and figuring out you know, what they would like in their new home and what works for them and so forth. And, but once the, owner, once the new owner turns the house over to Ben and Aaron, then they're pretty much out of the picture for the time being. I mean, they, you know, they might pick colors or whatever, but the whole rest of the show is just all about them. First of all, they clear out all the stuff out of the house. They get rid of all the bad stuff, you know, and it's kind of funny because Every once in a while, you know, they'll come upon a room or that maybe or a house that's been flipped before, you know, or they'll have some amateur renovator has been in there and that, and they've just kind of really made a mess of it. I mean, just mm -hmm. kind of not a good job. And so they've got to redo it all, you know. Right. And so, um, and the, the key to the success of these things is that the new owner has to be willing to turn their house over and to put their faith in the excellence and the work of this couple. It's just like any of these, you know, home renovation. But I really love what they do because they're very personal and individual. And it kind of makes me think of what the Lord does when we turn ourselves over to Him. You know, we have to give Him access mm -hmm. to our lives, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be very successful if we say, well, you know, I kind of like that big mess in the living room, so don't touch that, you know. And I don't, you know, don't do anything with the foundation of this. You know, I kind of like the way that is. So don't make any changes there. It, we wouldn't, it, it, it wouldn't be successful in renovating a house, and it's not successful in what the Lord wants to do with our lives either. Mm -hmm. So, um, because when we accept Jesus as Savior, we get a professional renovator in our life. Amen. And the Holy Spirit moves in, and he knows what we're meant to be and what we're intended to do with our lives. He already has plans for us and work for us to do. Um, as we've learned in previous lessons in this series, we, mankind, we consist individually of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And the spirit is that part of us that is God conscious. That's that part that's made alive when we accept Jesus as our Savior and the Holy Spirit moves in and then we become alive in our right. spirit. The soul is, so the spirit is God conscious. That's the God conscious part. The soul is self conscious. It's all about me. All about me. Mm -hmm. um, and the body is more world conscious. It's everything that's coming toward us. Yeah. Um, our soul, though, serves kind of as a bridge between the body and the spirit. And when our soul or our mind is properly aligned to the spirit, the body is in submission to a higher call, which is God. Um, but when the soul is in submission to the flesh, the spirit is silence. So our goal should be to submit, is to submit to the born again spirit, not the unredeemed body, right? Because when we're following that, 
you know, with what our flesh wants to do, it just doesn't work well because we're silencing the Holy Spirit in our lives. Mm -hmm. So our problem, and we've heard Tom talk a lot about this, our problem is in the mind. Yeah. It needs yeah. some serious renovation. No doubt. Um, our spirit has been made alive in Christ. That's that new man that we hear all about. But our mind needs to be renovated. Um, someone turn to Ephesians 4.23. I'm going to use my electronic Bible. <laughs> Whoever has it first, just. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Yeah. So the spirit of your mind is what's it, what needs to be renewed. Mm -hmm. um, the mind is that part of us that it, it comprises the way we think, the way we make decisions, and how we feel, and what we desire. Yeah. We make sound spiritual decisions. When we make sound spiritual decisions, we're God conscious. Yes? The NIV says it is attitude of your mind. Yes. Also. Exactly. The mind that is disconnected from God and in pursuit of things of the world is referred to in the Bible as the carnal mind. And if you want to make a note, that's Romans um, 8, 7. You know, we think that we know the way that is right. In Proverbs um, 16.25, it says, the way of, of man seems right, but it ends in death. Mm -hmm. one of, I think one of the greatest revelations to me, as a pretty, I mean, just fairly recently within the last few years, is that I can actually choose my own thoughts and think things on purpose. In other words, I'm not captive to just think about whatever falls into my head. I can actually control that. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of a life-changing revelation for me because um, as Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. I mean, if you're thinking a bunch of um, garbage thoughts, if you're thinking a bunch of hateful thoughts, that's what's gonna come out of you. That's right. You know, because that's where your mind is focused. Uh -huh. You might say, where the mind goes, the man follows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, God is concerned about the hidden man of the heart, which is our inner life. Um, and that's what we think about, our, inner, our innermost being, you know. And as that scripture says, the way we think determines how we live and who we are. That's why we need to think about what we're thinking about. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. um, it's important for us to understand this because if we don't learn how to take every, cap every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, we won't live the life Jesus died to give us. Right. Someone turn to 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Mm -hmm. That Verse is... Six always makes me scratch my head. That's a profound thing. You know, mm -hmm. I had... I shared this in... Um, Bible study that, you know, a couple weeks ago that um, it wasn't too long ago actually, I was just sitting at my desk and all of a sudden a memory of a stupid thing that I did years ago when I was in a backslidden state just came, I mean just all of a sudden downloaded right to my conscious and there was that memory of that, that visual memory of something that had happened and you know, I was immediately kind of filled with shame and condemnation and uh, recrimination yeah. you know all of that mm -hmm. and you know I'm like oh Lord I'm so sorry and I just felt like he was saying I've already forgiven you for that 
-hmm. You know, that's done, you know. And at that moment, I just kind of said under my breath, Satan, go talk to Jesus about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do you know, it was just done. I mean, it was just gone. And that was, that's kind of what this is talking about, is that we can take that thought captive. Now, I could have chosen to just right. renew, you know, yeah. ruminize over that and worry about it and become shameful, you know. I mean, this thing that happened 20 years ago, but the Lord in that small voice said, I've already forgiven you for that, you know. And I know that he has. I knew that he had. Mm -hmm. But that was the accuser of the brethren. Right. Our accuser coming to yes. me to strip me up, to make me think that I'm not what I am, and that is forgiven, set apart, holy, a vessel of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. making me feel less than what God says I am. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, that's what this means, is to help take every thought captive. That's right. Um, and we have the power to do that. We gotcha. don't have to let those thoughts, right. no matter what they are, mm -hmm. um, hold us in captivity anymore because Amen. we've been delivered from that. Amen. Okay, well, I was going to say the devil likes to, I know for myself, I know Paula battles with this. He wants us to fixate on the situation or the right. problem or the thing right? And instead of fixating on God. And, and it, when you fixate on something other than God, your mind goes all over the place. Yeah. And you have to rein it in. At, at, yeah, because it comes down to choosing to believe what God says. Are we going to believe the truth of what God says mm -hmm. more, than, we, more than, what, than our feelings? You know, because our feelings are going to, if we allow our feelings to direct us mm -hmm. through life, they're going to send us down all kinds of That's wrong right. paths yeah. every time. They are exactly. not to be trusted, yeah. you know. Yeah. But God can always be trusted because mm -hmm. he's truth and because he really loves us. Yes. Um, so there's three significant scriptures that I want us to think about when we're talking about renewing our mind. Um, can someone look up Romans 12, 1 and 2? Philippians 4, 8, and 9, and Hebrews 3, 1. And whoever has those, just... Mm -hmm. I got the uh, Romans 12? Yep, 1 and 2. Oh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay. King, King James Version? That's fine. Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, mm -hmm. which is your reasonable service. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and be not conformed to this world, but be mm -hmm. transformed by the renewing of your mind, mm -hmm. that ye may prove what is that good and, a, and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. Amen. Who has Philippians, because all of these have something in common that I'm going for. Philippians 4. Okay. Uh, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Okay. And then lastly, who has Hebrews 3.1? Yeah. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Is that the one you wanted? I don't think so. That's 3.1. I have a typo. Well... Just by the first two, we're just going to move on. The first two, one of the things that these verses have in common is that they all, what they all have in common is they all say, you must renew your mind. None of them say, pray that God will renew your mind. No, no. Because when we pray, God renew my mind, we're at, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a child coming home with homework and saying, you know, would you do my homework for me? Right. You know, God has given us the ability through the Holy Spirit to do this work, but he works in partnership with us. Right. We have responsibility, too. Did you, Chris, did you have That's a That's right. Amen. Might have been chapter 3. Um, yeah. Yeah, chapter 3. 
Well, you were looking at four. No, she no. said three one, but that wasn't it. Yeah, I, I've got a typo in there. I'm going to be 12, waste one more time. That's okay. <laughs> worrying about it. Um, your thoughts on Jesus? Who we know is the that could be it. Yeah, that's it. Um, so, right. so what is it, three what? So three when... So it's our responsibility to do the work to do to renew our mind. We've been given the ability through the Holy Spirit, through the new, the new spiritual man, to do this. But there is a work and there's effort um, involved. God has done His part, but He expects us to do our part. Um, and in Second Timothy one seven, it says. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and self-discipline. Yeah. Um, so we're promised three things to help us on this road to renewal. We're, we're promised a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of self-discipline. Right. All those things come into play when we go, when we consider renewing our mind. Mm -hmm. And God um, extends these gifts to, to his children but we are responsible for taking them and applying them to our lives. That's right. Self-discipline in our thoughts mm -hmm. is a critical element of renewing our minds. And God has promised to help. Mm -hmm. um, when Jesus was preparing to leave the earth and return to heaven, he specifically promised that the Holy Spirit would guide us into all truth. Yes. Yep. In John 16, 13, he says, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes... He will guide you into all truth. Amen. He will not speak yeah. on his own. He will speak only when he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. So we clearly need, to, in order to be guided, we have to be willing to go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Lord is going to guide us into all truth. He's not necessarily going to dump all of that into no. us all at once right. so that we have completely renewed yeah, mind. Yeah, it's a yeah. partnership because yeah. God has always, has he not, worked in partnership with his creation, yes, sir. with mankind. And that's what he desires for us to work together with him. Um, separating God's truth from the deceitful lies of Satan is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but God promises to help and guide us into all truth. But, as I say, you have to be willing to take his help. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not say the Holy Spirit would give you all truth. He said he would guide you into mm -hmm. all truth. So you clearly have to be seeking truth. Again, it's the same as a child saying, Mom, help me with my homework, versus Mom, do my homework for me. And he promises to bring all things from darkness into light when he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When Jesus came into the world, he made a big entrance with the big light, you know, heralding his arrival. And he's still, you know, 2017 years later, we're still talking about Jesus because God sent him to get our attention because we needed a savior Amen. and we need yeah. that light because there's no way that we would ever be able to understand right. the mind of God without the Holy Spirit he brings light into darkness in our world and God's truth is light for us Amen. one of the most important gifts that God has given us for renewing our minds is the Bible mm -hmm. his written word is a wealth of truth that shows his way of thinking and how he wants us to think. David wrote in Psalms 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Amen. So it gives us the illumination of how God mm -hmm. wants us to follow him. You know, um, he's given us this incredible tool for renewing our minds in his written word in tandem with the Holy Spirit because without without the Holy Spirit it still wouldn't make any sense to us mm -hmm. is that that's so, right you know it would just be words on a page mm -hmm. but it's when the Holy Spirit comes within us that lights that spirit in us 
and brings us back to life, brings that spirit man to life, that then we can, for the first time, really understand the things of God. So what are we going to do with this treasure? Are we just going to let it sit on a shelf, as I've often done at times in my life? It's like, oh yeah, my Bible, I forgot to read that this week. Um, Oddly, those are the weeks that I don't have such a great uh, renewal (laughs) going on in my life. Um, but we, so we have to get in there and dig for it. We mm-hmm. have to allow God's word and the Holy Spirit to guide us. Um, God promises to give wisdom to those who ask. That's he right. writes in James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask yes. God, yeah. who gives generously right. to all right. without finding fault, and it will be given to him. I mean, all we have to do is ask. Yeah. All we have to do is read the book. Mm-hmm. You know, read the manual and ask God for wisdom. He's not going to withhold that yeah. from us. Mm-hmm. Um, he gives us. He gives generously to us. So His wisdom is another incredible tool for us to use in renewing our mind. Um, so He's already done His part, yes. but He's not going to do your part Actually, or my part. Yeah. We have a part in this. Mm-hmm. We have a partnership with God. And we have to accept responsibility for renewing our own minds. Amen. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't help Jr. and no. Jr. can't no. help me. I mean, we can share together, and right. that's part of that process. When we study the Lord, the the Word of God together, and we spark off of one another, that's great. But I mean, he's still responsible for his renewal, and mm-hmm. I'm responsible for mine. Um, it is our mind, right? So right. we have to take some responsibility mm-hmm. for it. And we need to learn to think like God thinks. And that's that's not going to come naturally for us. No. Because the natural man knoweth not the things of God. Right. You know, it's right. the spirit man, but the spirit man has to be allowed right. to learn these things. And he's woken up and excited by, by the word of God. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, sometimes we can think, oh, I just had that bad thought. I must not be doing too good. We, I don't think we should confuse that with renewing your mind. Um, we can't always stop certain thoughts from entering our mind, but we can stop them from Flying. meditating on them that's or right. staying yeah. there. And that's, what, that's, right. that's where we can take every thought captive, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and we put on the mind of Christ. It's like, you know, when we... Um, we all know about in Ephesians talks about the um, armor of God mm-hmm. and the helmet of salvation is there for us. That's like putting on the mind of Christ. And that's going to keep us from getting basically spiritual brain damage. But we, you know, because we're going to get hit just like I was, I got hit a couple weeks ago, you know. And the enemy, especially if he thinks you're vulnerable in an area, he's going to take the, every that's opportunity right. yeah. to let you have it and so mm-hmm. having that spiritual warfare or that spiritual um, armor on including that helmet of salvation which protects our mm-hmm. mind from the enemy attack That's right. but then when a thought like that comes into our head or a memory or whatever then we immediately can take that captive by the power of the Holy Spirit and toss it out mm-hmm. And we become stronger and stronger. I mean, I can tell you what. I'm not worried about Satan bringing me bad memories. I mean, because I'm just going to be able to say, yeah, why don't you go talk to Jesus about that? And I don't think he's going to be doing that, nope. you know. And that, I mean, now I can honestly sit here and say, I don't really even remember what that memory was, just the instance. Because what I really remember is what I learned that day. Right. That I don't have to put up with that. If I've already... Confessed it to the Lord, asked for exactly. forgiveness and repented it, it's done. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, a lot of what we think about is directly connected to what we're feeding into our mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you put negative thoughts in your mind, that's what you're gonna end up thinking about. That's right. If you're if you watch, I mean, I at one point was news obsessed. You know, I loved watching the news. I grew up with my dad with, you know, every news show you can imagine. And he, when, when it came on the air, he ran CNN 24-7, you know. And so it's been kind of a thing. 
I've had to really train myself to pretty much shut that off because it just gets me so wound up, you know. And I mean, Jr. has kind of had to really work with me on this because he's like, I don't want to hear about it. I can't do anything about it, right. you know, unless it's really truly something, you know, he said, I already prayed for my country, I prayed for my president, I yeah. pray for all this, right. I don't need to hear every little detail. And I finally had to admit, you know, he's right, because because I always watch the news at before I went to sleep, and then I wouldn't be able to sleep, and he's like, yeah, that's because you're filling your mind with all this yeah. trauma exactly. and drama going yeah. on in the world, right. you know, so there's no news playing Right. in our house mm -hmm. at night mm -hmm. um, and it can affect your whole life so it can yeah, cause you, if you're around negative people all the time um, exactly. you're going to be negative that's right because that kind of thing is contagious mm -hmm. um, yeah. true the oh. word of God in Romans 16 19 says I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil so God wants us to be a lot more familiar with what is good mm -hmm. than what is evil. That's right. Um, Isn't that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need to guard our mind and not fill it with garbage. And this includes what we watch on TV, mm -hmm. what we read, and even what music we listen to. What scripture was that? Uh, Romans 16, 19. Thank you. Um, all of that. You know, I really admire um, Jr. because he's he's a man that guards his eyes. You know, and sometimes it can be kind of frustrating because I want to go see a movie and he's like, "Well, what's it rated?" And I'm like, "Well, it's R, but I think it's for violence." And he goes, "Yeah, like that's better." You know, um, she looks so straight. <laughs> I know he really he you know and it, and he won't go see anything that's got any gratuitous yeah. you know. Yeah love scenes in it or anything like that because he wants to guard his mind from that. He doesn't want those images coming back. And that's a really smart thing to do. He actually counseled me because I am a worrier, you know. I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily necessarily fearful, but I worry about a lot of things. Of and, you know, one of the things that he noted one time was you know, Gail, for somebody that worries a lot and has a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. you watch a lot of things on television that are anxiety written, like ID and <laughs> the ID channel. And I love, I used to love scary movies. And he's like, you know, that you're allowing that, that you're opening the gate yes. for that. And I never really thought of that, you know, that I'm like, well, but it's just interesting. I just love the detective work when they, you know, find this. And he says, yeah, but you're still opening the gate mm -hmm. of anxiety because you can't watch all that stuff and not become anxious about it. You may not think it, right. you know. Right. And then, so then you're trying to sleep at night and you're worried about your mom and you're worried about your brother and you're worried about the job and you're worried yeah, about me, yeah. you know, me being JR. And he says, you're just worried and anxious right. because you've right opened up. this great big huge gate. Right. And I had to admit, yeah, that's you know, big, yeah. that's... Yeah, because I love being scared. I love roller coasters. I love all that stuff. <laughs> and it's kind of stupid, you know, when you think about it. You struggle with anxiety, you know. So that was a very wise counsel for my husband to yes. kind of point it out. And, of course, he can't, you know, I, I still kind of go there sometimes, but definitely not as often. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to guard our mind and not fill it with garbage. Definitely. Yeah. You know, because that's what we're, that's what's going to be coming out. Um, in Romans 12, 2, who wants to um, turn to Romans 12, 2? Yeah, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that's the benefit to renewing our, renewing our minds, is that we know what God wants from us. We know what his will is. Um, Philippians 4, 8, 9, and this is something that J.R. throws up to me all the time, you know, when I said, hey, did you hear that news story? And he goes, was it... 
true? Was it good? Was it acceptable? Was it excellent or lovely? Lovely. And this is the verse um, Paul writes in Philippians four eight and nine. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent <laughs> or praiseworthy, think about those things. That's not what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, you know, is it true? Is it noble? Is it right? Is it pure? Is it lovely? What are we thinking about? What are we focused on? Um, so there's like eight steps that can be a filter in my mind to take me closer to God's way of thinking. And with each of these eight, the more I think about him, the better I feel. Um, some of the si situations we face just don't have adequate answers. Um, and it's times like these when we can look at the, to Jesus to fix <coughs> our thoughts on him. Um, everything else might be messed up, but Jesus is not messed up or confused. That's right. Um, he is seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us mm -hmm. and we have to keep our thoughts fixed on him most of you in this room know that 15 years ago I was going through uh, the loss of my husband Tony who went to this church and I can honestly tell you the only thing that got me through that was to fix my eyes on Jesus mm -hmm. you know because when you're going through something like that you don't have anything else and I really appreciated all the family and the friends, some of them in this room, that were there for us at the time. But Jesus was my That's right. rock. And so, it, you know, you go through one of those furnace of affliction times in your life, and you really realize Jesus is going to get you through these things. Mm -hmm. You know, Perfect I don't area. know. And, but you have to stay close to him. You have to be willing to... Say, you know, no matter what, I'm not going to think about the worst case scenario. I'm just going to think about Jesus. And so, you know, one of the things that we can do, no matter what, how horrendous the situation is, start naming off all the things that we have to be thankful about. Amen. That's part of renewing your mind. That's you know, right. we in this country are so um, over everything. Yeah, we have so much of everything that we have a totally skewed idea about yes. what we think we need and what we should have. Mm -hmm. And it only takes a few minutes or a few, a very small amount of time to just be praising Jesus for what he's already done mm -hmm. for us, the yeah. fact that we yeah. have an eternal life ahead of us, and just that we have family and health. I mean, if all of us got here, we're pretty healthy right. to have gotten here. Mm -hmm. So and that we are in a country where we can freely talk yes, about the right. Lord and yeah. without fe being fearful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that is something that for me, that's a huge part of renewing my mind is every morning to just wake up and start thanking God for what he's right. given me yeah. and not saying, well, I wish my mom was in better shape or I wish this were that or, mm -hmm. you know, this mm -hmm. job is driving me crazy and, mm -hmm. you know, all those, e even though that can't be true. But, I mean, it's not helping me by focusing on that. But what does help me is to start remembering all the blessings that God mm -hmm. has given us. And the biggest blessing mm -hmm. is Jesus himself. Mom? Yeah, you know, yes, we are Christian and you know, we're supposed to follow the Bible and all that, but is that every day we do have the negative things are coming in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I do is like this, uh-huh, I know where you came from. Right. You know from the law, so right. let's talk about it. Uh -huh. So I'm not going to fix them with you, and I, then I will be okay. In the name of Jesus, you go. That's you know about the law. Right. Because I'm not going to fix them with you at all. So I always have to say it that way. Yeah. I know who you are. See, I yeah, I know who you are. I know where you come from. Yeah. Yeah. So I will not accept it. You, I just took it into. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can ask from those from that verse, those eight things. Is it true? Is it noble? Is it right? Is it yeah. pure? Is it lovely? Is it admirable? Is it excellent? Praiseworthy? Yeah. Amen. Because that's what comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there's there's thoughts versus actions. 
So it's not just enough to think pure thoughts. Right. Um, Philippians 4, 9 takes us one step further and that we must put these thoughts into action. Um, it's not just enough to think kind thoughts. We must speak kind words and live out kindness in our actions because that's what it, you know, that's what really drives it home. Um, and our thoughts are revealed by our actions. Um, and in, some, in one sense, our actions do speak louder than our words. If we, say we're a various, if we say we're a generous person, what do our actions say? Are we giving or are we selfish? Right. If our actions send the opposite, that opposite message, then we may be living in denial or delusion clearly because clearly this does not reflect God's thinking. Right. Renewing our mind is a challenge that takes a lifetime. Um, it's not a magic thing that's just going to happen overnight. No, no, no. What happens instantly is our ability to do it yeah. through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But the word takes a lifetime. Um, but it's my mind, and I have to take responsibility for renewing it. But the blessings are incredible that God has promised if we renew our minds we will be transformed, and we will be able to test and approve God's will in our lives, mm -hmm. and we will experience peace. Yes. So what about feelings? Do they control our thoughts? Do you find it easy to think positive thoughts when you're feeling good and everything's just going great? Of course. <laughs> I remember when my growing up, my mom, who's just one of the most graceful people I've ever known, she, she had this thing she'd say, honey, it's easy to be good when everything's going good. Right, right. What's what's noteworthy is when you can be good when everything's going bad. Exactly. That's what God looks yeah. at. Right. You know, and I still remember her saying that that, you know, it takes nothing to be good when things are going your way. That's right. But it takes it takes God to be good <clears throat> when Amen things are not. Yeah. Amen. Um yeah. So how do you respond when you feel depressed, discouraged, bored, or unhappy? Do we allow these feelings to control our thoughts? Because that can really get us going. That can get us spun up and then spun down really quick. Um, but God has, remember in 2 Timothy, he promised to give us the spirit of self-discipline. So we can take control of that because we have Amen. that spirit of power yeah. and of yeah. love right. and self-discipline. Yeah. So Amen. we can grab hold of yeah. that and say, no, yeah. I'm going to refuse to That's allow right. this depression yeah. or allow this feeling of uh, unworthiness yeah. Yeah. to control my life because God says I'm worthy. Yeah. He I'm says I'm worth God. it. Yeah. You know, he loves me. Um, That's right. He says I'm this. He says I'm holy, acceptable, all of these things. And that's what I'm going to choose to believe. Mm -hmm. Not what my head is that's saying, right. which may be because I didn't get enough sleep the night before or somebody was, you know, cranky with me at work or whatever. And so that can control our feelings and can control our thoughts. I mean, have you ever had your feelings hurt? And then pretty soon you're just saying all kinds of self-discriminating things yeah, you know before, yeah. yeah I mm -hmm. mean and, and it's like how did I get here right you know mm -hmm. well because my feelings got hurt and then my feelings mm -hmm. kind of took mm -hmm. over yeah. and pretty soon my mind was all focused on that that's right so right thinking leads to right actions which leads to right feelings mm -hmm. the priority is critical if the feelings are in the front they will drive you wherever they feel like going. That's right. That's right. Exactly. As Tom said last week, you know, back in the 70s, the big motto was, theme was, if it feels good, do it. It must be okay. Well, that's not right. Nope. No. Nope. Um, that's pretty disastrous. Yeah. <laughs> um, because our feelings will just drive us right into the ground. Yeah. And they're just, e you know, everywhere. Uh, really um, no, I don't feel like it. She but the Bible... The Bible talks about three things we must do to develop a mind that agrees with God. And I'm going to share these things when we're done with our break.
So, so the Bible talks about three things we must do to develop a mind that agrees with God. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to share, hopefully we'll get through all three of these. Um, Colossians 3, 2. And I'll just read this in the Amplified ver- Version. Set your minds and keep them set on what is above the higher mm-hmm. things. This is a key to resisting temptation. See, when we make up our minds ahead of time what we will and won't do, when the temptation comes, we've laid the right foundation for that. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't think I would ever probably rob a bank because I don't see myself as a bank oh, robber, right. right? So there's, I'm not tempted to do that. Right. Um, but I might, if I don't set myself on the right course, I might be tempted to gossip about someone if I get into a social situation. So, you know, it's kind of like, well, you're going to make a decision. You're going to go in and we're going to go and we're not going to gossip about. You know, we're not going to gossip, we're not going to do that. that, So you have to, um, you know, make, set the foundation for the right choices to successfully overcome temptation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're somebody that, you know, another example, if you're somebody that has a problem or has had a problem with alcohol, probably don't want to hang out in bars. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I could I hang out in bars. That doesn't, That's right. doesn't a pro- have a problem with me. That's now, right. I couldn't be able to hang out in the C's chocolate shop. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could resist that temptation, so I don't go there. So I can right. certainly, you know. Right. Um, or maybe we just are very careful about the people that we hang out with. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, I and agree. choose our, That's you know, right. choose our close our, associates. Our, our, That's, yeah. I'm certainly yeah. not ever going to be our, one of these Christians that says we should only have Christian friends. Well, that's not true, you know. Um, but those people who that we're closest with, the people whose um, opinion matter to us, you know, the people who are in, who are going to influence us, mm-hmm. be careful about how much time we spend exactly. with right. people and who we spend it with. Yeah. Um, so we don't want to wait until the temptation comes and then re-ask, react based on how we feel about it. Because mm-hmm. now you're trying to make the, then, then you get into the justification. Right. You know. Yeah. So, right. and you know, the Bible says, resist the devil yeah. and, he will, and he will flee from you. Mm-hmm. And I forgot to put my, my scripture down on that. What? I think it may be James 4, 7. I think it is. <laughs> resist, the de- resist the devil, and that resistance is an active fighting against it. Mm-hmm. And he will flee from us, see, because we have the power to just exactly. cause him to run. Mm-hmm. But when it talks about temptation, it talks about flee from temptation. Mm-hmm. Don't try to sit there and fight the temptation. Just go. Yeah. That's just, just the safe Take off. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Um... So the second um, thing to do to have the mind of Christ is found in Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Mm -hmm. Renewing the mind is an ongoing process, as we talked about. Every day we need to take time to study the Word of God Mm -hmm. and be in prayer. Mm -hmm. So we can purposefully think according to what it says. But we have to know what's in this in order to think it and in order to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just can't keep one or two junky areas in our thought life because it just keeps us from being the best that God has for us. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we've all been guilty. I know I've been guilty of that, of having kind of a little closet in my life where, you know, it's like, oh, Lord, you're not really worried about that, are you? I mean, that's not causing any big problem. You know, that's just a little bit junky. And the Lord's like, yeah. You know, sooner or later, just like our couple that fixes up these beautiful old houses, they need access to the whole house Mm -hmm. if they're going to really transform it and bring it back. Or as they say, give it some love. You know, God wants to give us some love in all areas of our life. He doesn't want anything hidden from him because, come on, it's not hidden from him anyway, right? (laughs) You know, he already knows it's there. You know, he's he just wants the access to it. Yeah. He wants us to come into agreement with him that says, "Yeah, I need to clean out that junk. 
there. I've got a room in my house that's on the, it's on the docket this summer to be cleaned out. It's that guest room that we never use that's become like, a, it's a boar's nest in there. It's got all kinds of stuff in there. And to clean that out is gonna be a major deal. I don't know what I'm gonna find in there. I'm sure there's no dead bodies or anything like that. But, you know, I'm sure there's all kinds of stuff, you know, that if just like, oh, we don't know what to do, oh, just throw it in the room. Well, now the room has become kind of out of control, you know, because that's what can happen when you have an area of your life, right, or an area of your house that you just kind of don't keep up with, then pretty soon it gets out of control in there. And that's what happens in our life, too, yeah. with our thought life. And, you know, just pretty soon our thoughts become our actions. And then it gets kind of out of control. Yeah, I so, agree. And then this is the, in First Peter 1, 13, Peter writes, it's written, Where, therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, uh -huh. be sober, and hope to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is such an interesting verse to me because it's got this, the phrase, gird up the loins of your mind. That is a phrase that's from the Greek, and it's used to talk about runners back in the day where they would wear, because I looked this up because I was thinking, gird, <coughs> gird your loins. I mean, one of my favorite movies has that phrase in it where the boss lady is coming in and everybody's running around and somebody says, she's on her way, gird your loins. You know, because it's kind of like a, you know, oh my, oh man, get ready because something's going to hit the fan. You know, and so I was kind of, where did that come from, you know? And, um... It comes from this word that this talk about back in the Greek and Roman days, men wore these long robes, mm -hmm. and if they were going to run, they had to, you know, take all this skirting up and they tuck it into their right. belt, yeah. you know, so they could run freely. Right. Um, because if they didn't, they're going to be falling over all right. this excess fabric, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's what Paul's talking about. He wants us to take up the loose ends and get all of that out of the way because the runner could get into trouble. I mean, he could be running a great race, mm -hmm. and if something fell out and he didn't take care of it right away, he's going to get all wrapped up all in right, that pretty soon. Yeah. He's going to be yeah. flat on his yeah. face, yeah. even though they might be he might be picking up his stride. Mm -hmm. So we don't want anything hanging loose, right. you know, that's going to trip us up and cause us to stumble. Um, Peter's talking about the loose ends that exist in our mind. You know, those things that really we have not brought under captivity to Christ. Um, that stinking thinking that we do, you know, the hateful stinking thoughts thinking. that we might have toward people. Mm -hmm. um, whatever it is, we all have them. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, he's saying, look, gird, <laughs> gird up the loins of your mind. Get rid of that stuff. Get it out of your way. It's just going to cause you to, uh, to stumble and fall in your, in your walk with, um, with God. Um, and we can remove those thoughts by the authority of his word. Take those thoughts captive. Um, we have to seek to deal with all the loose ends in our thinking that we haven't submitted to the word of God or surrendered to the Holy Spirit's power. And we can deliberately allow wrong thinking and wrong believing to continue in our lives. Mm -hmm. We can allow bitterness, unforgiveness, right. hatefulness, mm -hmm. um, and we're making the same kind of mistake that that runner does when he doesn't gird up all of his clothing into his belt. Um, and the Lord doesn't want that for us. Right. He wants us to be able to run free with him yes. um, because he's only trying to help us when he speaks to us about the loose ends in our mind. So if we're smart, we'll stop everything we're doing and grab hold of these dangling ends mm -hmm. and get them out of our way so that we can run the race. Mm -hmm. um, because then we won't have the distraction of stumbling over all that stuff. So we need to get the junk out of our mind and out of our way. Um, something that we can do is to have a think session every day. And this is what Anna was sharing with me, that she started doing this exercise every morning of thinking about positive 
a positive thought about the people that she's going to encounter because she's got a job where she's dealing with the public all the time. Mm-hmm. And instead of thinking of these people as a nuisance, every day she's begun to think of them as a gift. Did you want to elaborate on that at all? Or? So I was talking to my psychologist about my anxiety, and part of it, as I said, I'll see names on my dental schedule, and I know certain patients are really hard to work with, either their personality or their mouths. And he was saying, you know, why don't you start every morning by morning meditation? And anytime a psychologist tells you that, I'm like, eh, you know, it's a little woo-woo <laughs> for me. But really what he's having me do is made a difference because he said, look at every, if you wake up and you have breath in your air, take a deep breath when you first get up, and you have breath in your lungs, thank God for that gift. That's a gift that you have mm-hmm. in your lungs, that oxygen. And he said, and when you look outside and you see whether it's raining or not, and you see the plants and trees, that's a gift to you from God. And this is the thing that instead of looking at people of, oh my gosh, that person's coming in, <laughs> every person that you come in contact with that day is a gift from God to you. Right. And when you look at it from that point of view that they're a gift to you, either you give them something or you learn something from them or maybe you have an edifying <clears throat> word for them, if you go into it that way, then you're not looking at the, oh my gosh, there's the complaining lady again. You know what I mean? And it has really changed the way I look at things. I've only started doing it for the last two weeks, but it's, it's helping. You start your morning off that way, yeah, man. that every person you come into contact with, even that car that cuts you off, mm-hmm. that driver, you go, Lord, I don't know where it is, but they were a gift sent to you, <laughs> to me, as a gift. But I mean, it really does change the way you think. That's right. So, <clears throat> question. Um, this is revolves around this. Um, <clears throat> so should you turn them away? Now this is a real question from really an me question. Should you turn people away when they're being um, spiteful, bitter, mean, cruel, putting stuff on Facebook, you know, being just negative people in general? Mm-hmm. Um, should you turn them away? It be just because you may be or may not be spirit filled, mm-hmm. okay? Well, these people, some people get turned away from the Christians. Some people oh, get turned right. to the, you know, they're too negative. Eh, I don't even want to deal with that. Or I'm going to unfriend them because they're too negative. Well, I'm just using social media as an example. But um, I don't believe that that's real on a personal level. I think that uh, God says to love everybody regardless right. of who they are, what they've done, or where they're going. God says love somebody anyway. So that was my question. Mm-hmm. Is that the case? Like, it, I'm, I'm being real. Like, <laughs> I well, struggle with I think the anxiety that, and stuff you know, too. So. There's, there's oh. a difference between acceptance and agreement. Okay. You know, we have a family member in our family that put some pretty vile stuff mm-hmm. on Facebook. Shocking. Um, some of the family members have unfriended this person. Mm-hmm. I haven't done that. Mm-hmm. And I, I rarely put a like, but occasionally she, she'll, they'll put something on there that I, I that's positive, I'm gonna like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't agree with what she says. Right. Right. I accept exactly. her. I accept her. Mm-hmm. You know, um, pray for her. I. You know, um, figure she's working on her testimony. Mm. Kind of look at mm-hmm. it that way. I don't say that out loud. You know, that right. way. Close enough. You know. <laughs> right. But you can certainly pray <clears throat> for that person. Um, but yeah, I think it's an individual. Mm-hmm. Thing now, I've had people in my Facebook. These are people that I went to high school with that put some pretty awful stuff on there that I really don't want on my news feed. And I haven't right. seen these people in 40 years except yeah. for the class reunion. Really friends, yeah. So I don't feel bad about unfriending them, you know. But you know, people that you know you really have a relationship with, right? And you know, I mean, for me, I don't unfriend them. I still accept them and love them, but. Um, you don't have to agree with everything. I think, Gail, it goes back to the Bible verse that you talked about when it came to even, like, watching the news. Mm-hmm. If it's if it's edifying, if right. it's loving, it's a good report. Now, we all know people, 
that talk negative all the time. Right. Not just on Facebook, just every time you see them, it's negative, 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 right. negative. Mm -hmm. We still love those people. Yeah. We still pray for those mm -hmm. people. They're still part of the family of God if right. they're a Christian, right? But the, the thing is, is you do have to separate. You can't be so involved in the negativity no. part. Yeah. And I know for me, I don't unfriend really anybody, but I'll unfollow right. that yes. because I don't want to feed more into that. Yeah, but exactly. I certainly, I don't dismiss them as a friend or anything because God sees them the same way he sees us. So mm -hmm. it's... Um, yeah. the, the generic, you know, the most rounded answer is that you need uh, you need to establish boundaries there there to give self-respect if you have them people will respect you but the internet with social sharing is really permissive and so it ignores boundaries and lets people post whatever you want you don't control your space as much so you should control your space and to put up boundaries and take respect which boundaries are healthy yeah. But, yeah. And you can't actually love truly without boundaries either. True. So if you want to answer that question, study boundaries in love. I got a good book for that. Um, so that's it. I remember listening to Pastor T.D. Jake. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of him. And he, one of the things he, t he talked about, uh, there are three basic kinds of friends. Um, I forget, two of them, I forget what they were called, but... One that really stuck out to me were the ones it's called confidants. Mm. Awesome. Comrades and constituents are the other two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And the what he said about confidants are these are the ones that that they will that they uplift you. They'll they'll work with you. Be like like and even if they don't necessarily and even if say you you're doing something that's a bit unusual or off or or like, you know, as long as it doesn't go against God's laws or man's law, laws, then off, and they'll they'll support you, or at the very least, they won't like drag you down, like like say what craps in a bucket do. Right. Do. Yeah. Do if you if you heard that, you know the analogy of the craps in the bucket. You know, as soon as one when one crab starts to get away from the others, the others will try to drag it down. Right. They'll, they'll start. And if it continues, they'll actually, they'll actually, they start pulling it apart. They'll eat and kill it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's a good analogy. Yeah. 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 That's a good word. Yeah. They kind of suck you down. Yeah. Negatives. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Can I say something? Also? Yes. Uh, see, like in the, the children of God, uh, you know, there's some that would be out in the fellowship of God, and a lot of things bother them, you know, because. Because the battle is, is still raging, you know, it'll continue to rage. But you know, the children of God are just like the billions of stars in the sky. And each one has a different type of glory, you mm -hmm. know. And, and, the, and the enemy, the Prince of Darkness, is always trying to, uh, try to rob them yeah. of, that, of that glory that they have. Yeah. We had that in the first place, in the Garden of Eden, see. And, and, and then, uh, but the, like, uh, like there's uh, on on Facebook, I um, I get encouraged by and 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 I get edified by by other Christian people because mm -hmm. the Bible says we're all workers together, right? In, in a great body, and um, so I, I I just say if I have to uh, declare a, a scripture, I I just say uh, stay in the word it'll keep you out of trouble, you know. Amen. That's right. Stay in the word. That's right. Stay in the word. Well, and that's my next point. Spend time thinking about scriptures that renew your mind with the truth about mm -hmm. what God says about his love for, for us. So and what his point plan. The third point. That's the third point. Yeah. The third point. And what his plan for us is and how he wants us to live and behave. Um, you know, you can use a concordance to find scriptures to cover just about any, well, probably anything you might be encountering in your life. You know, and that's a wonderful tool to find out, well, what does God say about temptation? What does God say about um, worry? You know, and there's there's a scripture for that that you can claim for yourself and put that on your mirror in the morning if you need to. I had one scripture that I had on my computer for a couple of years that just helped me, you know, to, 
Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, with praise and thanksgiving, give thanks. And the peace of God. That's your favorite one. Yeah, yeah, I mean that. I mean, there's that peace of God that guards our hearts in Christ Jesus. And I was going through kind of a big drama at work, and I literally had that on my computer, you know, and was reading that daily. Um, so, you know, and to really set your mind on renewing, you know, renewing your, our mind, like what Anna does, just to make a decision every day. That's I'm going right. to be positive yeah. about this. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let this bother me. You know, because right. stuff's going to happen. I mean, right. you know, <laughs> it just, we live in this world. And yeah, we're, we've got, we're a renewed, regenerated mm -hmm. creation. Mm -hmm. We're powerful in our, you know, with our spirit man. But we still walk in this world and stuff is still going to happen and tragedy is still going to probably hit every single person in this room sooner or later. And so we have to be prepared to fight that. That's right. You know, and not cave to it, but now, is this true? Is it acceptable? Is it lovely? You know, is it worthy of my attention? Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so there are words floating. It's, but another thought I had is, what does your stream of consciousness sound like? What are the thoughts wow. that just go through your mind? Mm -hmm. You know, um, there are words floating through my mind at all times. Some are good and purposeful, and others are not. Mm -hmm. My mental monologue generally contains way too much self-focused, self, and even self-defeating battle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, if we could be in each other's heads, we could probably <laughs> hear a lot of stuff, you know, that, did she just ignore me? Did she just diss me? I can't believe it. You know, she just walked right by me, never said a thing. Or, I can't believe I'm so stupid. I just said that, or I didn't do this, or how could I have forgotten that? You know, I am so stupid. Is that true? No, that's not true. I mean, it's true that we say it to ourselves, but it's not true. It's not what God says. You know, it's not what God says about us. Um, I'd like to be able to do that but I don't think I can pull it off. Maybe somebody's asked you. I mean, you know, Tom asked me to teach this class. I mean, I Pretty know. last minute, too. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I mean, I said yes because I'd make it a point to say yes, but, you know, you're thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm covering for Tom, and I'm teaching the P. Cabrera stuff, and I don't even know the P. Cabrera stuff, you know? I mean, it's like I don't even know what is but he going to say about this. But I do. Well, that's the thing. I, I do know my Bible, so, you know, but the self-talk that we have, mm -hmm. can, it can either be uplifting if we agree with God about who we are, or it can be really defeating if we agree with the enemy about who we are. Gene? That statement says this to me. The person was busy, didn't notice me. Oh, yeah, yeah. The second thing I was thinking is, why am I worried about having to have him look at me? Exactly. And so when I do this, I just let God talk to me. Yes. Because I don't, if I was to start doing that, I would think that nobody likes this old fart. You know, just, it's going to be just that. <laughs> and you know that's not true. Gene, that's not true. You know why? I appreciate you. I understand that because I can't step into that thing. I've never been there. So why should I go there? Right. Because God is with me, you can be against me. Yeah. Amen. That's the, that's Amen. the renewed mind speaking, Gene. So step one is to learn to guard and direct your mind. You know, our mind is the place of our intellect, reasoning, and intentions. And our behavior begins there. Um, and my mind is where spiritual transformation happens. But the object of my regular thinking will determine how my days, years, and ultimately my life plays out. You know, as JR has mentioned a couple times in the last two times he's preached, you know, he's all about this renewing the mind and how the mind and the body connection and how, you know, people that worry and have really negative thoughts, yeah. they come up with some pretty bad, oh, yeah. you know, oh, there's yeah. a commonality of disease. Um, 
among that, you know, and so um, mm -hmm. sometimes we just don't bother to ask for the Lord's protection and direction. It's true, true. Yeah. And, and his oversight over our mind. Maybe from now on we can do our best to start our day with a simple prayer like Anna was talking about. Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, keep my mind firmly set where mm -hmm. you want it to be mm -hmm. focused today. Yeah. I mean, if we started out every day with that. And then when that negative thought or that hateful thought comes up. Right. I mean, I've really been working the last, you know, few months um, about with the spirit, the new Gale, you know, versus the old Gale. It really is old, but, um, you know, but it, I was sharing with Anna, this is such a stupid thing, but it was a big thing. Um, I'm in line, so we're up in Vancouver, and I'm in line at the store. I was buying some clothes, and um, I, I'm in, I got, I have my purchases. I'm in the line. I'm like the second person in the line, and this really cute young woman comes, you know, bouncing up, and she says, is this the line? I said, yeah, she got behind me, okay. So the guy, you know, there's one dude at the register, and he's waiting on somebody. Well, so then, all of a sudden, this second woman comes up to the other register, and this little gal just right, right around me, practically knocks me down, you know, to get you know, and there's a part of me, I mean, immediately I felt uh -huh. yeah. the old man at me, and I just wanted to say, hey, the line is back here, you yeah. know, but, you know, which would have been such a stupid thing, but it was like, you feel justified yeah. Yeah. to doing these things, yeah. but fortunately, because I have been working on my reactions, <laughs> yeah. my yeah. unnatural reaction, uh -huh. um, I didn't do, I mean, the Lord just likes it. Don't react. You're fine. <laughs> you're you know, you're just going to have to wait right. a couple more minutes to spend your money. That's about it. You know. So I didn't say anything. So I go up to the line, and the guy's waiting on me. And it, here, I hear all this commotion at the other register. You know, well, come to find out, this person that came to the register really hadn't come to open the register. And she wasn't ready to wait on this person. <laughs> so she was being sent to the back of the line. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so now she's all upset because now she's got to go back. Right. And now she's, and so the, um, and the guy that waited on me had said when I came up, I, he saw what happened and he said, thank you for waiting. And I, fine, you know. And, but anyway, so now there's all this commotion and this other, cashier is telling her, I'm sorry, I'm not open for business. I'm not opening this register. I have to go back to the back room and you need to get back in line. And she's like, well, I was right behind her. And she's like, because she didn't want to have to go behind all these other people, you know, that were in the line. And I don't know how it worked out, but I did kind of laugh with the, with the guy that was waiting on me. And I said, um, yeah, she was behind me until she cut in front of me. You know, but I just, I kind of had to laugh. I never even looked at her. But as I walked out of the store, I thought, I wonder if that's the Lord just kind of letting me know that, look, you know, Not you're good. fine. Not and good. this was just, just kind of a little yeah. funny thing, you know, but it was kind of, because it was so, I mean, it's, I hate to even say this about myself, but it took everything I had in me to sure. not react mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah the flesh just grown up. I would have said something. All 130 hey, pounds of it just went, you know, yeah, wanted right. to do that. Right. And I didn't do it, and I was I'm kind so of proud of, you. of myself. You've graduated. Yes. I, yes. yes. I don't want to be too prideful, though, because, you know. Yeah. Can I tell you a little quick story? Yes. A very, very cool story. I was at the store, no, I was at the, the tire store yesterday, getting my tires put from snow tires to regular tires on the car. I went in there, I found out it was going to be like an hour and a half to two hours of a wait, so I said, you know what, I'll make an appointment. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, if you make an appointment, it'll be about half an hour, 45 minutes. I'm like, fine, I'll make an appointment. Came back, one o'clock. Got there. 
I said, okay, I have one, one thing. My tires have to be in the back of my car because put the top down so that we can get the tires in and out because the truck's too small to hold four tires. So they're in my back seat in these plastic bags. I said, one, make sure that the person who takes them out doesn't lean his metal belt buckle and all that stuff on the outside of my car to lift Oh, them. yeah. That was my one. And I said, I'll take it. Go have fun. So I sat there, played on Facebook, did whatever I was doing, played my games, and it's now been 45 minutes. And I'm looking at my watch, and I'm like, okay. Now, the old me would have been like, it's 45 minutes. <laughs> Come on, you said I got. I had the appointment. I was here when you told in. me to be That's here. Right. <laughs> so now it's an hour and fifteen minutes. Oh yeah. And I'm oh my God. I didn't say a word. I just got up and I'm looking at my car. And I'm saying, How far? And this guy comes in and says, "We'll be out in a minute." And this other guy comes in, pulls this truck with a trailer in front of all the babes. So even if they were done, they couldn't get out. Anyway, I didn't say a word. I was patient. I was being. I knew my body language was in check because I'm the new person, yes. not the flesh, rising up ready to kill somebody. <laughs> I want to go I'm home. proud of you already. <laughs> the man walked up to me and said, I just wrote off your whole bill. <gasps> I was seeing how patient you were, and I'm really sorry it took so long, but here's your money back. Wow. wow. $83.60. Man, that's still It wow. wasn't 12 bucks, you know? It was, so I went into Bob's truck in today and had it done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But you know, it was because I felt as it was the Lord saying, "Good job, well done. You did oh, well what you then. did what you were supposed to do." Yeah, yeah. 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 It, was, it was just a blessing that goes by with. Think twice, speak once. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I have a hard time with that. I know it. Yeah. I'm still, yeah. I want to know now. Yeah. 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 But if we do have a, a scene, a riot, or whatever the situation is, then God really can't work in that. He doesn't no. want to reward that. Oh, yeah. Behavior. He's like, you're going to fight your battle? Rock on. Yeah. And well, and I have license plates that says, uh, you know, I serve a risen Savior. It wouldn't have been really no. good for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, Gail, so I just budget? wanted to thank you for speaking tonight. It was very enjoyable, and I always yes. love hearing you speak. And I